Okay, what we have here is, this is typical of what I find at a lot of the broadcast sites where the, to ground at the base of the tower, a couple of things if you want to zoom in here is they've attached lugs to the base. These are aluminum lugs that are actually bolted to a steel framer. And the problem that happens is you get corrosion between the aluminum lug and the steel. So it may look good, but actually if you take a resistance checking or take a digital low resistance ohm meter, you'll find a high resistance connection through here. So it's something that needs to be taken apart, clean. Actually, this is the improper termination of, uh, of grounding. The other issue that we'll see here is, is the size of the ground conductor. This is a number six solid copper. This is a number uh, four. Generally, these are tinned for, um, to prevent corrosion, although this one is just a bare one. You can also see how it's bent and damaged. And this damage occurs when the ice falls from the tower. So if you look at the height of the tower, the ice will melt and fall down and come and damage and bend these components and create these bends in, um, in the wires. Now, the other thing that we look at then when we're looking at a grounding system on a tower is we'll look at the framework that holds up the ice bridging. And this is the assembly that where the antenna cables are run, the waveguides are run, and it's critical that this metal here be grounded to the same ground that we have on a tower so there's no potential between the tower itself and here. So what we would do on this situation is design a ground system where we would replace these with a much larger uh, conductor, uh, stranded, it would be a tinned conductor. We would replace these with a, um, a plated lug and we would use a special anti-oxidation compound attaching to the base. And then we would actually sleeve these with a, um, a protective PVC sleeve, heavy duty, to withstand any falling ice. The reason we prefer um, stranded over solid is it's easier to work with. And number two is a stranded cable has more surface area. And the more surface area presents a lower impedance for higher frequencies, especially lightning. Could be approximately a megahertz and so when you go to stranding or more surface area, then it will better conduct the lightning current. Common practice would be to come off the base, establish a, uh, a ring ground, which is a large um, copper cable that would be trenched, and there would be a ring buried all the way around the base. Augmenting that ring, we would use a combination of uh, deep driven ground rods. Uh, anywhere in this part of the country, we go 70 feet to perhaps 100 foot down, um, trying to attain a resistance per electrode of less than three ohms. Then we would then bond into the bridging and tie everything into, into this so it's all one common grounding grid. That would include the fencing, that would include all the structure you see here. It would extend down and tie into the transmitter facilities there. We would also try to incorporate into the switch gear and the utility um, power coming into the facility, taking all of this and creating a grounding grid. On this particular structure here, the way that the engineer designed it and looking at the original plans, there is a grounding conductor that goes from here all the way out to the anchor points. So there's actually a radial ground that is buried and as you look down there, those extend out almost a thousand feet to the inner anchor, and then it goes all the way out uh, to the outer anchor. So there is an underground radio ground conductor going this direction, going over in that direction there, and then going that direction there. So on 120 degree angles, we have um, buried grounds going out. Now that's a little unusual, I've seen at, at most towers, but it will make an excellent ground system um, taking that lateral ground all the way out. Okay, here we have an example where they came off a grounding grid and they brought the conductor up to bond to the steel, which is an appropriate thing to do. As far as the technique, they did not clean any of the paint off, and again, they used an aluminum lug, and what you'll end up with is you'll end up with oxidation between theirs. A better technique at this point would either be to CAD weld on or use an approved system where with a copper lug that's plated and bolted on and then 
clean all of the uh, paint and oxidation off and treat it with a um, oxidation anti-oxidation compound um, to make sure that that maintains good continuity. Now, in a ground system, part of the National Electric Code talks about a ground has to be continuous, which means that might be continuous for six months, and then it corrodes, and then we don't have a continuity anymore. So in designing a ground system, you have to look at how will this ground system perform over the, the life expectancy of the ground system. And I would say on this, based on testing we've done, that probably has a six month to a one year life before the corrosion on that uh, negates its effect. Typically in a transmission facility such as this, grounding takes on different forms. Now this is a classic uh, methodology of grounding and actually what this is is used for high frequency grounding purposes where they'll take a, um, a roll of four inch copper strap and they will connect it to their transmitter facilities. You follow it over, it'll go through and it will interconnect different pieces of equipment. And actually this strap ends up going outside tying into the ground grid. Uh, you'll also see this used running down walls. Sometimes they'll run it across the floor and bond all of their transmission equipment to that same copper strapping. And the intent here is, is to maintain equal potential between all of the equipment. So instead of using a cable, uh, it uses the four inch, and that offers a lot of surface area for high frequency noise. Here's where the strapping, we can see it's used outside, run down the walls and across the floor, and then it's actually soldered or brazed together, creating a ground grid out here, and there'll be various connections, like in this case, going to a glycol pump, going to various uh, electrical equipment, and even the uh, cooling equipment, the mechanical equipment. And then this will continue on and tie into the grounding grid that's uh, provided on the perimeter of this building. Here's an example where the copper grounding strap gets tied into the grounding electrode system. You see they're bringing up a hard-drawn copper grounding cable that's a bare cable that goes down and ties into the ground system that grounds goes around the perimeter of the building and then they bring that in and they'll connect it to the ground strap and then that that will be done at various points around the building uh, where they will inter tie it into uh, the, the overall ground system. Typically a hard drawn copper is used as opposed to a soft drawn copper just for durability and strength and um, it, it's much harder to cut that cable and damage it when you're doing digging and construction work.